How's everybody doing tonight? Good, good. Y'all have spring break coming up soon. Man, that didn't get the response that I thought it would. There you go. All right, so we're starting a new series uh, this month, well, the next two weeks. Um, It's called Good Story. And so we're going to start out tonight by talking about some pretty good stories. And and what we'll find uh, through tonight is that there are a lot of good stories, and there are some of them that are true, and there are some of them that are not. But first, I want to start off with a little activity. So how many of you like money? How many of you would like the opportunity to win some money tonight? So I've got, I've got $20 here. And at least two of you are going to have the opportunity to win this $20. So who thinks they're interested in winning this money? All right. Once I tell you that you're going to have to mess up your hair really bad to get this money, who still wants it? How many of you... How many of you have seen the Jimmy Fallon game that they play called Egg Roulette? All right. So, this is what you guys are going to do. I am going to name a movie. When I name that movie, you then have to determine whether that movie is or is not based off a true story. So, if you'll notice... You have one egg that says true, one egg that says false. So what you're going to do, and each one of them is labeled. So you have one, two, three, four, five. So five movies. So what you're going to do is if you think that movie is based on a true story, you are going to grab the egg that says true. Understand? Following me? Then once you both have made your decisions, you will then... Take that egg, I will count, I will say one, two, three, go, and you will smash the egg on your head. If you get the answer right, if you get the answer right, it's only going to be a boiled egg, so it won't be as messy. But if you get the answer wrong, it is going to be a raw egg, and raw egg all in your hair. Are you two still committed to winning this money? Now your last. Also, I have another stipulation. When I say one, two, three, go, if you hesitate to see if the other person got it right or not, you're done. So when I say one, two, three, go, you smash it. Got it? All right. So also, if you are not familiar with the movies, if you, can, you guys can see this screen right here, there will be a picture, not yet, there will be a picture of the movie <laughs> up there. So... So I'm going to put, you'll, you'll have the picture of the movie, and I will read you a short synopsis. That means what the movie's about. All right, so the first one, as you saw, is the movie Dunkirk. This movie came out in 2017, and it was about allied soldiers from Belgium, the British Empire, and France are surrounded by the German army and evacuated during a fierce battle in World War II. So... The eggs that say number one, decide whether you think it's true or false. If it's based on a true story, choose the true true egg. If it's it's not, choose the false egg. Make your choice now. Go ahead and pick your egg up. All right. Now, I'm going to count one, two, three, go. Then you smash it on your head. You ready? On top of your head. Not your your face, Carl. All right. Ready? One, two, three, go! All right. So Kirsten is up one to zero, Carl. You can just put it down. All right. All right. Dunkirk. The events are based on true events from the Battle of Dunkirk in on June fourth in nineteen forty. Our next movie is The Notebook. This came out in 2004. It's about a poor yet passionate man who falls in love with a rich young woman, giving her a sense of freedom 
but they are soon separated because of their social differences. So, make your choice. Your number two egg, true, is this based on a true story or not? Pick up your egg that you decided on. Come on, Carl. All right, you guys ready? One, two, three, go. Kirsten's on a roll. All right, so our score is now 2-1. Kirsten is up two, up with two. All right, our, our next movie is Rocky. Rocky is a movie that came out in 1976. It is about a poor, oh, sorry, it is about a small-time boxer who gets a supremely rare chance to fight a heavyweight champion in a bout in which he strives to go the distance for his self-respect. So, your number three eggs. Pick true or false. All right, you ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. All right. Kirsten is still up 2-1. Our next movie is Cool Runnings. This movie came out in 1993, and it is about when a Jamaican sprinter is disqualified from the Olympic Games, he enlists the help of a dishonored coach to start the first Jamaican bobsled team. So, from your number four eggs, Choose true or false. All right. You got it? Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, Carl. All right. Kirsten's up 3-1. Last one. Last one is Remember the Titans. This came out in 2000. It tells the story of a newly appointed African-American coach and his high school team on their first season as a racially integrated unit. So, choosing your last egg. Is Remember the Titans based on a true story or not? All right, you ready? One, two, three, go! Nice, you both got it right. Very good. All right, I didn't say this before. Cool Runnings was actually based on the first Jamaican bobsled team in 1988. And Remember the Titans tell, was about the 1971 Virginia State Champions, T.C. Williams High School. So, Kirsten, you win $20. I'll put that there. All right, D, will you help them out? All right, D is going to take you guys. we got some towels and some shampoo so you can wash your hair. Let's give them a round of applause, guys. That was awesome. All right, all right. So, so how many of you have ever heard a story that you thought was true only to find out later that it wasn't? I think we all have. Like, even, like, like with the, you know, it's never a good feeling finding out that something you thought was true was not. And there are a lot of good stories, but just because it's a good story doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Like, Rocky is a really cool story. Like, it's a really great story. But just because it's a good story doesn't mean it's true. So, what holiday is coming up? Can anybody tell me? Easter. Easter. So we got Easter coming up. And this is a time when we focus on the most important story in the world. This is a time when we focus on the most important story in the world. And that story is about the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's about the death and resurrection of Jesus. And this is a story about a man coming back from the dead. The story about a man coming back from the dead. And just that alone should make us kind of question like, like somebody coming back from the dead. That just doesn't seem possible. And it's a good story, but, but is it true? Is this a true story? So before we get to talking about that, I want to give you guys a little refresher. So we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 23. And it's going to be on the screens if you guys don't have your Bibles. I would encourage you to bring your Bibles or at least have it on your phone. But here we go, starting in chapter 23 with verse 44. This is what it says. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. 
and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. So here's where we find Jesus has died. But, but there's something that happens in this moment that we don't see here in the book of Luke. But uh, if, you, if you attend Journey pretty regularly and you, and you, did, um, the, if you did the request that Pastor Will made and you read through the book of John, you would have read this. But in John chapter 19, verse 34, where it's talking about this same instance, um, it was uncommon for somebody to die as quickly as Jesus did on the cross. Um, usually, usually a crucifixion took like 36 hours for somebody to die because the way that you die is, is you basically suffocate. And if you didn't die quick enough, they would come and break your legs so that, so that you died faster. And so, uh, so it was uncommon for, for Jesus to have died so quickly. And, and so what one of the soldiers did in, um, is recorded in the book of John chapter 19, verse 34, is he actually came up with a spear and stabbed Jesus. Like he stabbed him just to make sure that he was dead. And then in the book of John, it says that blood and water poured out. Blood and water pulled out. And, and a lot of people believe it's weird to hear that, like you expect blood to fall out, but water. And, and a lot of uh, like medical people uh, believe that this is due to the soldier actually piercing Jesus' pericardial sac. So this is your, this is your medical lesson for today. Um, and if I get it wrong, Nikki will tell me later. But um, So your pericardial sac is basically like the outside of your heart. And there's this fluid um, under that sac. And a lot of times when you suffocate, that fluid will begin to build up. And so what they believe is that, is that the soldier actually pierced that sac. So basically pierced Jesus' heart. And that's why uh, blood and water poured out of him when, they, when he stabbed him. So Jesus is dead. Like, he's real dead. Like, he's died on the cross. He's had his hands and feet nailed to the cross. He's been stabbed in the side. So he's dead. So then our story, we're going to pick up in Luke chapter 24. Starting in verse 1, this is what it says. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And the day that they're talking about is some of the women that had been following Jesus. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. So there's a lot in this story to, to think that, that maybe some of the parts of it were, were fabricated, uh, either, either to make it sound like a better story or just, or just to for the sake of entertainment, to make it a more entertaining story. Because what we find is in that verse, that in, in 23 verses 44 through 46, we found that, that the sun had stopped shining, like in the middle of the day, like the sun had stopped shining. Uh, we're, 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 hearing, we're reading about this public death, and then we read about this miraculous uh, resurrection. And a lot of what we're hearing in this story, it sounds like it's out of a movie or an internet hoax. Sounds like it's out of a movie or an internet hoax, and it was even hard for some of his for some of his believers uh, or from for some of his followers to believe. Like even they were having trouble because because what we find here is that a lot of the guys that followed Jesus around they had pretty much come to terms with his death, like they were accepting it and they were they were kind of making peace with it. And then this angel shows up and just rocks their world and says he's not dead. He's alive. And, and this is a good story, but, but how could it possibly be true? Like, how could the story possibly be true? So then, so then these women, they go and tell his disciples. So we're going to pick up where we just left off in verse 8. It says, And they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, 
and he went home marveling at what had happened. So, first off, we find, you know, these angels show up and kind of, and just, like, blow these ladies' minds, like, like Jesus is gone, he's still alive. So the ladies go and they tell his apostles. And at first they, they couldn't believe what these women were saying. And, you know, how, how could a dead man possibly come back to life? And, and what it says here and what we just read, it says that, that these words seem to them an idle tale. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard that before. I've never heard it in my life. So when somebody says something is an idle tale... It's not just a lie. Like, they didn't think these ladies were just telling a lie. They thought what they were saying was utter nonsense. Like, they thought that these ladies were crazy. And so Peter went, and he checked for himself, and he found this empty tomb. He found this empty tomb and found that Jesus had come back from the dead. And this story, this miraculous story The story that these ladies were telling wasn't just a good story. It was, and it is to this day, a true story. This story of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not just a fairy tale. This is a true story, and and that story is true. If, If that story is true, then it should change everything. It should change everything, and and Scripture tells us about the reason for Jesus' death in the book of Romans, chapter 5. And I'm going to start reading in verse 6. It says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation." Guys, this, this story of Jesus' death and his resurrection, it's, it's not just a story. It's not just a story, and it, and it meant something then, and it means something now. It means something to each and every one of us in this room because Jesus, he died and he rose again so that we could be saved from sin and so that we could live for the God who set us free. He gave us new life and He made us friends of God. He made us sons and daughters of God. Before Jesus' death, that was not possible. Before Jesus' death, we were all condemned to hell. Each and every one of us in this room were condemned to an eternal life of suffering before Jesus died on the cross and rose again. I know it's hard to believe but there was a time when I was like a lot of you guys. Like I was, your, I was young, um, and I started attending church probably around the age of most of you middle school guys. Like I was like 7th or 8th grade when I started attending church, and, and I loved my friends at church. Like I loved spending time with my friends at church, but, but really like my desire was to just be accepted at school. Like I wanted so bad, I know this sounds funny, but... I just wanted so bad to be cool when I was in school. Like, so in order to do that, in order to, in, in order to seek out that attention, in order to seek out the friends that I wanted to, to hang out with, I did a, a lot of really dumb things. I did a lot of really dumb things. I hung out with a lot of the wrong people just so that I would feel accepted, just so that I would feel cool. And the way that I lived my life for a long time was I was, this, I was one guy at church, but then I was this completely different guy at school. And I'm sure there's a lot of you in here. I'm not dumb. I'm sure there's a lot of you in here who are living that same life. When you come to church, you say all the right things. You don't say the things that you know you shouldn't. But then you get to school and, and, and you sound like a sailor. Jason knows. 
so that was me for a really long time. Like I said, I started, um, I started going to church around my uh, middle school years, and I went to camp for the first time the summer after my 10th grade year. I went to camp uh, the summer after my 10th grade year, and over that time, like really a lot of my best friends were in my youth group. Most of my best friends were in my youth group, and, and, and they recognized that double life that I was living. They recognized that, that I was one person at church, and I was a completely different person when I was at school, and a lot of them called me out on it. A lot of them called me out on the double life that I was living, and for a really long time, I just ignored them because I wanted that acceptance. I wanted that feeling that people liked me at school. And so, uh, like I said, my first year at camp was the summer after my 10th grade year, and it was that Wednesday night. I don't know who was speaking. I don't know anything about the worship. But what I do know is that that night was the night that I felt God tugging at my heart, telling me that the life that I was living was worthless. That life that I was living meant nothing and that He had so much more in store for me but I had to trust and believe in Him in order to receive those things. I wasn't going to get those things through my friends at school. I wasn't going to get this life that God had for me through the way that I was living. So I did exactly that. I, I, I went down. Um, you guys don't hear this a whole lot anymore, but I, I went down to the altar, um, and, which was really just a stage like this. There wasn't anything fancy. But um, I went down and I prayed. My youth pastor prayed with me and I gave my life to Christ. And, and guys, I'm going to be honest with you. My life didn't instantly become perfect. But that desire to be accepted, it kind of lessened over time. That desire to be accepted by people lessened over time. And, and, and Dee can tell you, a lot of my friends can tell you, that's something that I still struggle with today. Like, that's, that's just a, a thing that I struggle with today is just acceptance and rejection. But, but after I gave my life to Christ, my life had a new purpose. And that purpose wasn't to be accepted by those around me. That life wasn't to be accepted by the people that, that were doing things that I knew I shouldn't when I was at school. Because in that moment, God radically changed my life. He radically changed my life and helped me to realize that, that the things that He had in store for me were so much better than the intention that I was constantly seeking. The things that God had in store for me were so much better than those, those friendships that I was making at school. Guys, that was 16 years ago that I gave my life to Christ. 16 years ago. And all of that is true today. All of that is still true today. Like I just told you guys, I still, as a, as a 31, I'm about to be 32-year-old man, I still struggle with being accepted by others. I still struggle with rejection. But guys, I recognize that a relationship with God is so much better than the attention that I can receive here on earth. And even though that's something that I, can, I still struggle with, God continues to help me with that. God continues to help me walk through this life that is so difficult for me to live because I, again, because I just desire to be accepted by others. But God lessens that for me and helps me to, to deal with those, with those desires that I know I shouldn't have. And guys, these, these friendships that I began making almost 20 years ago now in youth group, those are some of the friendships that I still have to this day. The friendships that I made when I was in youth group are the same ones that I still have to this day. A lot of you guys remember Adam Robbins who used to um, help us with worship and lead one of our boys' small groups. Adam's one of my best friends. Adam's one of my very best friends. He's the best man in me and Dee's wedding. And I met him at youth group over 15 years ago. I met him at youth group over 15 years ago. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't talk to or keep in touch with any of those friends that I made in middle and high school. As soon as I graduated high school, those friends that I thought I had, that I had gained through doing the wrong things, 
through hanging out with the wrong people. As soon as I graduated high school, that communication stopped. None of them reached out to me. Guys, I'm, I hope and pray that, that you guys have, have made some friends here at JSM. Guys, those are the friends that are going to stick with you through life. Those are the friends who aren't going to, who aren't going to flake out on you when you have a tough decision to make. Because, guys, relationships that are built out of attention-seeking won't last. Relationships that are built out of attention-seeking, out of wanting to be accepted, those friendships aren't going to last. So like we've been talking about, there are a lot of good stories out there, but not all of those good stories are true. There are a lot of good stories, but not all of them are true. There are a lot of true stories out there, but they can all change your life. That's why the Easter story matters. That's why we're doing this two-week series on Easter. That's why this story matters, because it's the most important story that we can tell, because it's more than a story. It is the most important story we can ever tell. Because it's not just a story, it's a story that changed everything. It's a story that can change you just like it changed me. And as we prepare for Easter Sunday, I want to issue, everybody in this room, I want to issue a challenge to consider how this story can change your life as well. Consider how this story can change your life as well. Whether you know Jesus or not, there is something in your life that needs to be resurrected by the same God who raised Jesus from the dead. Guys, I know it's hard, especially for those of us um, in, in public school, I know it's hard to go into a place where, guys, I subbed for a long time. And some of my leaders might disagree with me, but I'll tell them they're wrong. You guys are living a way harder life than any of us ever had to live growing up. You guys, guys, a fifth grade girl was just killed because of bullying. Guys, I got beat up in fifth grade, but like, that just blows my mind that the darkness that is in our public school system. But guys, you have an opportunity to change that. You have an opportunity to not go in there seeking attention, doing those wrong things that you know are wrong. You have an opportunity to go in there not seeking attention, but bringing the light of Jesus Christ and changing people's lives through this story that we're talking about tonight. Guys, I am your number one supporter in that your life is hard. Because I believe it. With all the things that you have access to, guys, I didn't get a cell phone until I was like in the 10th grade. And, and that cell phone couldn't do the internet. Like, like, I could call people, and when I texted, I had to hit a button like four times to get one letter. Like, like guys, the things... The things that you guys go through with social media. Guys, when I was in high school, I didn't have to worry about whether somebody was going to like that picture I just posted. But I recognize those are things that you guys care about. Guys, I want to tell you right now, that attention that you're getting through social media, that attention you're getting through hanging out with the wrong people at school, it's all going to go away. You're going to leave middle school. You're going to graduate high school. And all that's going to go away. You're going to graduate high school. Some of you are seniors in here tonight. You're going to graduate high school this year. You're going to graduate high school this year. You're going to go off to college. You're going to go to different schools than your friends. There's a good chance you're not going to hear from the friends that you thought you would. There's a very good chance of that. So guys, focus on what matters. You seniors have, what, like a month left? Less, a little more than that? Like, you guys 
Spend that time focusing on what matters. Stop caring about what other people think. Stop caring about the attention that you're getting from others and focus on this story that can change your life. Focus on this Jesus who loved you so much that He died a horrible death that none of us could ever imagine. None of us could ever fathom the pain and suffering that He went through. He died that for you. When He died on the cross, Carter Sutton was on his mind. When he died on the cross, Jed Browning was on his mind. Guys, God cared about you so much that he died the death that you, that me, that every single person in this room deserved. Don't let that go to waste. Let's pray. God, I thank you for God, this story. God, but most importantly, I thank you just for the fact that, that this story is true, God. God, that you loved us so much that you were willing to die a terrible death, God. You loved us so much, God, that, that you died the death that we deserved. You were resurrected. God, you died and you rose from the dead. God, I pray for each and every person in this room, God, that you would help us all to believe that this story, it's, it's not make-believe, God, but it is absolute truth. God, this story is absolute truth, and I pray that you would help us to see that, that Jesus, what he did, it wasn't just without reason, God. He died, and he rose again for a reason, and that reason was to save each and every person in this room from sin. God, that purpose was so that each and every person in this room could live a life with you, God. So God, that's our prayer tonight, God, that you would help us to recognize that, God, that you would help us to see that, God, this story, not only is it good, God, but it's true. And God, it is a story that can change our lives forever. In your name we pray.